Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashley King, and I'm really excited to uh, see everyone today, anyone who might be watching. So I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite topics today. Today, I'm going to talk to you about TEDx um, and TED, what it is, why you should care about it, um, how it can help you to grow your visibility. Um, and I, it's one of my favorite topics, so I'm really excited to get telling you about that. But uh, in the meantime, I just wanted to tell you a little bit of um, reflections I've had over the last few weeks. And uh, last night I went to a lecture. It was a really interesting lecture. It was the David Goldman Lecture, which is an annual lecture at Newcastle University Business School. Um, it's held by some really esteemed colleagues um, of Newcastle University Business School. And um, it was really interesting because the topic was about um, timber and it's a, a subject I would never normally be interested in or know very much about, but uh, the lecturer um, presented some really, really exciting uh, innovation in timber production and how it can be used to um, help climate change. Um, so the reason I wanted to mention that is not because I'm going to be talking about timber today, but I really just wanted to say one of the things that really moved me by that talk and it occurred to me while I was listening is although the person who was speaking has so much experience and so much knowledge and so much to contribute to Newcastle University Business School, especially as their incoming Goldman lecturer, um, what I found most interesting was they, their uh, presentation wasn't about them. It was about the research, it was about their innovation, and it was about how we can together collectively as a community um, impact climate change. And that just blew me away because I go to lots of events, I go to lots of networking, I speak myself, I see other people speak all the time, but I had forgotten how often people talk about themselves. And actually, it was so helpful to hear people talk about real research, real statistics, real motivational stuff that was about a, a bigger problem than ourselves. And it just really uh, had me thinking. And I think that's one of the things I wanted to share with you today about TED and TEDx, because a lot of people don't realize when they do a TEDx, it's not actually about you, it's about the audience, and it's about your gift to the audience. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. TED, TEDx, why it matters. Okay, so for those of you who've never watched me before and you don't know who I am, my name is Ashley King. I am a creative entrepreneur and a podcaster. I have my own podcasting studio called Flamingo Heights. It's in the Oosburn, a very creative part of the Newcastle upon time. Um, one of the things that I also get called is pod girl because I'm a podcaster, but also because of this pink hat, it's become a bit of a, a name that sticks as well. Um, but in a former life as well. I was executive producer of TEDx Newcastle University and co-licensee holder with my colleague Gabrielle. And so what does that mean? Well, uh, TEDx is a huge thing and I'm going to go into that a little bit. So what is TEDx and what is TEDx? So TED was created around 40 years ago. It was created in California and it was a small uh, group that would meet and they would watch lectures and it would be around things like technology, entertainment and design. So that's why the words TED are as they are, TED, T-E-D, for technology, entertainment and design. And so TED grew and grew and over time they started to take donations, they started to be supported more, they started to sell tickets, it just became bigger and bigger. But one of the things with TED is it has its own brand that is just so, um, so big. People love it because of the quality and the caliber of their speakers. So if you look at TED, they have had speakers like Bill Gates. They have had speakers um, who are Nobel Prize winners, who have uh, achieved fantastic feats in science, um, incredibly inspiring people. And so, to be associated with TED and the TED brand is quite a big thing. So if you're a speaker, a professional speaker, and you win a TED talk, have the opportunity to present on a TED stage, that is incredible. What a lot of people don't realize though is there is something else called TEDx, which is a little bit different. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about these differences. So what is 
TED, we've covered that a little bit. What is TEDx? So TEDx is more about your local audience. It's more about your local community. So while TED Talks are for people on a global stage and anyone can listen to them and they're supposed to cover things like human trafficking or climate change or big ideas, um, TEDx is more about your local ideas, things that matter to you on a more local or regional level. So what you might find is something that's discussed in a TEDx talk in India at a TEDx event might be very different to a TEDx talk in Kansas. And so it's supposed to reflect the interests of the local community. Now, TEDx is also an independently organized event uh, relating to TEDx, but it's separate. So. One big thing to let you know is the difference between TED and TEDx is budgets. So TED as a group, um, it's a TED foundation which runs TEDx and TED, and they have so much uh, philanthropic support. So TED, you might be expecting to pay £10,000 to attend one of their um, events. Uh, you will get brilliant goodie bags. Many sponsors want to be associated with TED, so it's very much a, a very special event and I've been fortunate to attend TED Women in California in 2019 and it was incredible. So TEDx on the other hand is again locally uh, created by independent organizers but who are volunteers and who actually have to self-fund uh, or self fundraise for that activity. Although they're able to sell tickets and they're able to get ticket sales, they won't actually be able to um, make a profit from the event. The event is supposed to support their local community. So it's meant to be really a love letter to your region and your local area. So that's a little bit about the difference between the two. I'm really excited to tell you even more about TED and TEDx and why I love it so much. So I want to tell you why I love TED uh, and TEDx. So. In 2018, I went to an event. It was at Newcastle University. Uh, at the time, I worked at Newcastle University and the university had supported some students who decided to create a TEDx society. And I was really excited because I'd seen the talks online. I'd seen those little red letters that everyone's used to. And I was just intrigued and it was horrible weather. It had been a snow, I think it was called the Beast of the East or something like that. It was really bad snow that day, but still attended and the place was packed. And I thought, gosh, the weather's really bad outside. Who's gonna turn up for an event like this? And when I arrived, it was just amazing that students had put this production on, the production quality, the, um, the way they had designed the stage. I mean, this is a room that I had seen for lectures, for graduations, for all kinds of things, but I'd never seen it decked out in this way. It was a very theatrical style of production. And I was so impressed and I couldn't believe the work that had gone into finding the right performers, the speakers, um, just the, the welcome on the day, the activities and the networking. And one of the things that many people don't know about TED or TEDx because maybe they haven't been to an event but they've seen it on YouTube, is sure there's these wonderful short videos on YouTube, but actually going to one of these events is amazing because you get to network. And that's a huge part of the TED ethos about bringing people together to share stories, to spread ideas, to share ideas worth, um, worth sharing and that matter. So one of the things that we, we do is you network, you have activities and games, there are all kinds of goodies and sponsors, and there's something that we call activations. And these are a way that a brand or a sponsor can have an activation or a way to communicate or connect with a different audience uh, who maybe they haven't met before. So it's a really cool way actually for sponsors to get involved. An example of this might be a furniture store who may maybe wants to promote a new furniture range, maybe it's more sustainable or climate friendly, and they might not have uh, certain groups that would go into their space because perhaps they, their building's very glossy and they just don't know how to get their word out there. And so you might've heard about guerrilla marketing. I know in MBA courses or anyone watching who might not be doing an MBA, but has an interest in marketing, there's lots of ways you, you can market. But one of the ways these activations work is for that furniture store, they might actually donate their furniture for the day, uh, get so much exposure and press, the attendees have a great place to hang out and enjoy it, and everyone's happy and they get to, to really support a, a wonderful event. 
So these events are really um, unusual, they're fun, and they just really help um, to connect people. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about the myth of TED uh, Talks and TEDx. So the first myth is that it's the same thing. It is deeply connected. Um, they are, uh, you know, well associated, but TEDx is different because they can't control everyone all over the world. So you have to apply for a license to be a TEDx organizer. So how that works um, is you have to be affiliated with a town or a city or a school. So you might have TEDx NHS Gateshead or TEDx Women Newcastle. Um, however, one thing to be really mindful of is if you're thinking of starting a TEDx event, there's a couple of tips I want to give you. First of all, look around your area, do some research. Has there ever been a TEDx event in your area? Because before you start organizing, make sure there's not another TEDx organizer already in place or who you might want to speak to and ask if it's okay to take that opportunity and to start doing that. Uh, also for something like TEDx Newcastle. We have a fabulous TEDx Newcastle event in Newcastle upon Tyne. It's run by Herb Kim and Emma Turnbull um, and they do amazing work. Now for that event, because they have the license for TEDx Newcastle, they can then run events like TEDx Youth Newcastle, TEDx Women Newcastle. So it is worth saying that before you start an event, make sure that the uh, ability to run that in your location is actually av it's available. Okay, um, the other thing is budgets and working out what it's going to cost you. So I knew that when I started, uh, when I went to that event that I told you about, I absolutely loved it and I loved the energy and I thought, gosh, I want to help support these students. And I spent ages campaigning two to four years to try and get more um, recognition for the amazing work that these students were doing. However, one of the things I would say is, although I worked out calculations of how we could fund our event, it wasn't as simple as just getting a, a camera and recording some speakers. There was a lot of work that went into logistics, into coaching speakers, into making sure that, um, you know, all kinds of things were, were done. And what happened for us is, um, I'll, I'll actually go into this in a little bit more detail in a minute, but we had all kinds of challenges with COVID and the, the pandemic. And um, what we had to do is adapt very quickly. And that had a, a lot of um, effects on things like making speculative decisions without the full picture. So I would say before you start planning a TEDx event, make sure you think about the budget, think about people who might be interested, who might want to support you, and how you're going to recruit volunteers and what you want to get out of it. Something I want to really get across today is that TEDx or TED is not for you. It's not about your ego. It's about the audience. It's your gift to the audience. So let's talk about that gift to the audience. So TED as a foundation um, have a legacy or that they wish to leave with the world. They, if you go online, if you look on their YouTube channel and on their own website, they have hundreds and thousands of videos talking about all kinds of different things with all kinds of people in different backgrounds and languages and from different faiths and communities and that's really exciting to me um, and one of the things they talk about a lot is they want to leave a legacy for the world they want to leave a legacy of communication and education that they can share um, with people all kinds of different stories and I love that I love to see what we have on those channels and one thing to say which is really important um, about TED and TEDx is actually the credibility of um, the work that they produce. So what many people might not realize is if you were to get a TEDx talk, you're not just going to go on stage, do your usual talk, um, which you maybe haven't practiced and wing it. You can't, it's not possible because what you will have is you will have a curation director that you will work with and you will work with, in my experience, I've always worked with teams for about six months. So our speakers would get uh, a lot of support. We would go through their talk. We would help them to structure their talk. We would fix uh, their talk over a series of weeks. But also the most important thing, which you'll find is you have to evidence your talk. So you can't just go up and talk about um, a particular topic and just um, 
you know, wing it, as I said, you wouldn't be able to go up and say stats that you don't have a, a backup evidence for or you don't quote. It doesn't mean that it's an academic presentation, but you would be expected to provide references. And that's a huge part of the TEDx journey as a production team to make sure that actually your speakers are on track. Because the last thing you want to do as a production team is have to say to one of your speakers, oh my gosh, uh, Ted have actually pulled your talk uh, because it wasn't up to scratch and it didn't have the right evidence. And I'm really sorry, I know you had 30,000 views, but we've had to take that down. Nobody wants to have that conversation, which is why for me personally, as a TEDx organizer, I've always been really, really strict. Um, okay, so I wanted to share a little bit about how to get a TEDx talk. Now I want to say here that I'm saying how to get a TEDx talk, not a TED talk. Again, like I said, um, there is a difference, there's a distinction. You can get a TED talk and it's a wonderful idea and I, for anyone who does, I'm really happy for you, but they are very hard to get because the competition is extremely high. It's a global community. People are applying from all over the world so I would say, if you want to do a talk, go for a TEDx talk uh, rather than a TED. Who knows, one day you might um, get there. If you look at someone like Simon Sinek, he has done TEDx talks before he has been affiliated with TED in other ways. Um, so it's, it's a really good uh, tip. Just Okay, so how to get a TEDx talk. So, first thing. It is about the audience, not you. So what I would highly recommend is if you want to do a TEDx talk, go onto the TEDx website, have a look at uh, the event section or participate. See what TEDx events are coming up, what's going on. You might find that you might live, for instance, in Cheshire. So you could look at what TEDx events are coming up in Liverpool, Manchester, and anywhere else in your area. Uh, like I said, there could be TEDx NHS, TEDx Women, TEDx Youth. I've seen kids about six years old doing TEDx talks. Um, it just depends on what the event is. Okay, so that's my first tip is look locally, see what is going on and start to make those connections. I would start to think about your topic, okay? What would you like to talk about? Is it something that's new? Is it something that's gonna add to a, um, to the research or uh, to a particular viewpoint? Is it something that's gonna actually give something different and new? And this is something you'll find TEDx organizers will ask you when you, when you pitch to them. They'll be like, well, what is so special about your idea? So you really need to start thinking about that, your topic, what is so unique about it? Remember, TEDx is based originally around technology, entertainment and design. So is it a really exciting challenge in the tech sector? Is it something that you've experienced? It can be human social justice matters, you know, however, there are certain rules that you might not be aware of about TEDx. So I need to tell you there is as well now. So you aren't able to actually, uh, what they call prosthetize, I can't even say that word, uh, prosthetize. Um, I don't know why it's not rolling off my tongue, apologies, but you can't go on the stage and you can't basically start preaching about a particular topic. So if you have a religious view or if you have a spiritual viewpoint about something, you wouldn't be able to just go on a TEDx stage and start talking about how wonderful it is or how we are all going to have uh, something happen to us when we die or it has to be a uh, anti and not necessarily anti-religious, but it needs to appeal to a broad and global audience. And, and just also remembering that you want to accept different people's viewpoints, so it needs to be something that's inclusive. Okay, uh, you can't talk about things like quantum physics in, uh, without proper evidence. We've already me mentioned evidence, but I know that there are people who've wanted to talk on, on my TEDx stage about things like crystals and certain topics that are a little bit more new age. Again, uh, there are certain rules with TEDx about what we're able to talk about and not. So 
if you've got the research and you've got the credibility and the qualifications to talk about certain things, sure, go for it. But what I would say most of all is to really be careful about your content because it might be the reason that you're rejected if you apply for a TEDx talk. Okay, so one thing that I'm very mindful of is I just want to share a little bit about what it can be like for me. So when I have been um, very involved in TEDx, I'm not currently running at a TEDx event, but if people have known that, I've gone to events and I've had queues of people wanting to talk to me. And the first thing they ask me is, how do I get a TEDx talk? I want to be on the TEDx stage, give me a TEDx talk. And some people are more rude than others. Some people are nicer than others. However, what I would say is you have to make the effort to get to know the people behind the organizing team. So again, it's not about you, it's about the audience. What will you bring to the audience? If you have someone who's getting 30 messages a day asking for a TEDx talk or going to events and getting lots of people asking to be a speaker, what do you think is going to make you stand out apart from all these other people? So what I would highly recommend is if you want to get a TEDx talk, sure, apply, but actually go and support. Go and buy tickets for their events. Maybe go, maybe plan to do it in three years, but in the meantime, go and support their events. Ask how you can help. Volunteer. Do all kinds of things that you can. Tell people about their event. Help to sell tickets. Um, it's it's something I see a lot and it makes me cringe, not just with me as a former TEDx organizer, but uh, with people that I know, such as Herb Kim, who runs TEDx Newcastle. I have previously had events where I've invited Herb and there'll be people again queuing up and telling him that they should be on his stage. And it can be really awkward because, you know, what is it about you that makes you so special? So. I hope that helps uh, and it comes across in the right way. I mean that from the bottom of my heart that it really is about what you can do to nurture your audience. So please keep that uh, as it's meant uh, to be shared. Um, I think it's really important to consider when you are thinking about a TEDx event, who are the organizing team? So there are lots of different expectations around TEDx and I have to be honest it's actually changed a little bit now so during the pandemic um, there was a lot more uh, content that was put together quite quickly perhaps with low production quality and so it's actually uh, opened up the world in a, in a different way for us to do t TEDx events however every event is different and every budget is different and as I've already mentioned with TEDx events you are relying on a local organizing team so what i've found is that if you look at a city-led tedx event they tend to be a higher production budget because they've got uh, people all over the city who want to attend you've got people who maybe come from outside their region who want to attend and support the event so in my opinion uh, that can be a higher production quality or, or budget uh, for instance, uh, universities, I personally believe there is a massive opportunity for universities to support their societies who are, have TEDx societies to run uh, TEDx events. And the reason I say that is because when we ran our TEDx event, we have had collectively over 200,000 videos on our official TEDx talks. So that is an incredible reach uh, to reach different uh, audiences. And it's great for visibility for that institution. However, at the same time, many universities don't support their, their students in running TEDx events. The students need to do that themselves, although students can apply for grants um, as well. So I would say a, a university in the UK that's doing really well when it comes to TEDx is TEDx Warwick, uh, because actually they collaborate between the university and TEDx Warwick as a city organize, organized event. Um, so there's some great places doing some brilliant stuff, but remember there are so many ways to find a TEDx talk. Um, however, if you're going to do one, remember this production quality is important because if you get up and you go on stage and you are there and you're doing the most wonderful talk and then it was filmed with one camera angle and uh, the lighting's terrible, although you might have wowed the audience in person, 
it actually means that you might have missed out on that global audience. It might not give you the credibility you deserve. I've actually had some TEDx uh, speakers come to me who've spoken at other people's TEDx events and said, I wish I'd spoken at your event because I would have had much better videos. Um, I'm actually too embarrassed to share my TEDx talk. And that is awful to hear to say, oh, wow, I'm a TEDx speaker and have all that credibility and, you know, um, that goes with it, but not be uh, brave enough to share it. Uh, that makes me really sad. So definitely think about the production quality. On that note, what goes into a TEDx event? So we have a uh, various things like for a, for a TEDx event you've got all of the organization that goes into the day you've got your speakers who've been curated and come together to to present and talk um, but we also have the production side of things so you'll have a camera crew you probably have at least three uh, three camera angles and maybe a, a camera on a slider as well you'll have a director you'll have um, staging lighting sound and all sorts of different things. Um, one of the things that I would say about that uh, production is you're probably looking at about five to 10 grand just as a starting point if you're wanting to organize a TEDx event. So if, if anyone's listening and thinking, yay, I wanna organize a TEDx event, you'll either need to sell enough tickets or fundraise to, to get those numbers up. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about my experience with TEDx and going to TED Women in California. So what was it like going to California for TED Women and why did I go in the first place? Okay, I became a TEDx organizer in 2019 when I became president of the TEDx Society at Newcastle University. And one of the things I knew straight away is looking at the numbers to run our TEDx event to the production quality that TED expects and TEDx expect and the speakers deserve, I knew that I would need to sell more tickets and I knew that I would need to um, get more visibility for our sponsors. And one of the things that I found when I spoke to sponsors and said, hey, I want to do a TEDx event, they had said, great, um, I want to sponsor this. How many people will see my stuff? And I had to say, oh, well, we're only allowed to sell 80 tickets and then we've got 10 speakers and they're going to get a plus one. So there's only 100 people who can come. And the sponsor said, you know what? I love TED, I love TEDx, I love what you're doing, but I can't support you for only 100 eyeballs. That just doesn't make math, uh, it doesn't make sense for me. So what I knew is I needed to get more, um, more people watching the event live. And what happened was I decided to look at the numbers and saw that if I applied for a bigger license, I would be able to have up to 1,200 people which would be incredible for the sponsors. It would mean that they would get much more uh, views, they would get much more engagement. And because we wanted to do these really fun activations with our audience, it would just be a much uh, more interesting way to, to run the event. So alongside my colleague, Gabrielle, who was my uh, former executive producer and um, co-organizer, we went to California to TED Women. This is something that was, uh, you know, we had to take time off work um, and time off university, time off our studies. We had our own family commitments, but we went to California for five days. It was really intensive, uh, so much fun. And we self-funded this, by the way. So uh, we went to California, we got to meet amazing TEDx organizers at two days of really intensive TEDx training. So we got to learn about how TEDx is funded, what they do, uh, we got to learn about how to coach your speakers better, how to make fundraising decisions to support your event, and all kinds of different topics. And it, we also got to mix with some very wealthy and cool people in California, which we weren't expecting. And then we got to attend TED Women, which is a TED event, but it's focused primarily on women. And I have to be honest, having gone to a TED Women event in person, I would love to go again, or even a, a TED, a, a formal TED event. Um, it's amazing the care and attention to detail at a TEDx event. And I do wanna say, uh, that uh, if you ever have the chance to go to a TED event from an event organizer perspective, the logistics, the, the production value they've got in it, it must cost them hundreds of thousands of pounds. The staging is just right. 
there's sofas that you can sit on and watch the talks. It's so much fun and what we really like is when you see those talks uh, online on YouTube, they've been edited. So when you're actually there in person in California watching these talks live, people mess up. They make mistakes like I have many times this morning. They'll say things that maybe they, they get stumbled on their words and, you, and we got to watch behind the stage rehearsals and then we got to watch people actually doing their talk live and that was incredible. It's being, we felt like a, a sneak view on those rehearsals was incredible. But it just goes to show again the work that goes into these events. So I just wanted to share that I think for anyone listening, TED is an incredible opportunity to go to, to go and attend, to be part of that. If you've got the money to donate or to support their activity, it is a really special community to be part of. If you talk about TEDx, I just want to say TEDx has changed my life. It's one of the things that I absolutely adore. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, when I went to my first TEDx event in 2018, they had a provocation where they asked people, um, what would you, would you ever, that was the, the title. And so I wrote on a board, dare to dream. So they were, would you ever, and I had dare to dream. And they had this whole board of X's and they had everybody's little picture of what they'd said. And I still have that photograph would you ever dare to dream? And every day I look at it, it's on my desk, and every day I dare to dream. And some days I find um, myself getting scared or unsure of whether I've made the right decisions, being an entrepreneur, and should I just get a normal job? And I look at that picture and I think, would you ever dare to dream? And it just reminds me of how much um, dreaming is so important. And I think one of the things that I wanna leave you with today is for anyone listening, when you go to a TEDx event or a TED event, every single talk is meant to leave you with something that really provokes you. It doesn't mean that you have to like every talk. Some of the talks I listened to in California, I really was not into and I didn't agree with. Um, some of the topics were quite hard to get my head around. But even now I sit and I think about those talks so I've watched them back many times and my perspective has shifted or changed. So it's not that a TEDx talk is for everyone to have the same idea, for us all to be in the same eco chamber. It's to promote uh, thought and to provoke um, discussion and for us to share more and have more community. And so if you're going to do a TEDx talk, I strongly encourage you to consider what will you leave with your audience? What will the legacy of your talk be? And that's something I'm proud to say that with our recent event, Imagine a World, our conference um, for TEDx Newcastle University in April 2021, despite a pandemic, despite being forced to cancel, um, you know, for me having to make speculative financial decisions, I've self-funded everything, I funded the production, I did the curation, did the set design, everything myself. Um, one of the things that I would say is I still get people saying, wow, I was so moved by this talk or this particular discussion or part of the day or the networking activity. And so I would really say that those talks continue to touch lives. There's been over 200,000 views of our videos and that's only 10 speakers because we're only allowed 10 speakers. So how much could you change the world through your own story? I really encourage you to think about what you would share on the stage. But please remember, it's not about you. It's about your gift to the audience. And that's the gift I'm leaving you with today. Thank you very much.